Hello ladies and gentlemen, bet you weren't expecting this one, were you? Look at the title, look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this. This is going to be a Super J Cup 1994 review. Not thoughts, not this match was alright. We're going to do a full in-depth review because I haven't done one of these for feckin' ages. Ladies and gentlemen, it was either on my May or my June Q&A, or my July, one of the two, one of the three even, idiot. Um... Q&As I did last year in 2011, I got asked, would I review the Super J Cup? And I said, yes, if you remind me in the summer, I'll definitely do it. And either I didn't get reminded or I forgot to do it. Um, but here we are. An opportunity has arisen for me to watch the show with a group of guys. And I thought, yes, if not, not only am I going to watch it, I'm going to review that shit. Now, speaking of reviews, let me just, let me just, it's not speaking of reviews, speaking of requests is what I was going to say. I just like to just like to clarify, I don't do requests, right, as a rule, because if I say yes to one person's request, surely I've got to say yes to everyone's request. And then I will get a backlog of shows that either I don't want to watch or shows that I do want to watch that I haven't got time for. Because remember that, you know, I've got plenty of other shows to review as well. Maybe I'm doing at least one a year, I mean, a year, fuck, a month as part of my 10 years ago series. So sometimes I take requests. It really does depend on the show, I think, is what I'll say. This one was, oh, yeah, I'd love to review that because I want more people to see it because there's so many people out there who haven't seen this show, and that bugs me, to be honest. Do you know what the worst part about it is? The worst part about it is that the entire show, in fact, fuck it, right? What I want you to do... Ladies and gentlemen, look down below in the description, right? You'll see a link. What I want you to do is, if you've got any faith in my judgment or what I say about wrestling, right? What I would love it if you do is click that link. It'll open a new window and it'll open this entire show. In all its glory, is on YouTube in one bit. And then literally, when I've finished doing this review, yeah, watch it. And trust me on this one, you will not be disappointed. 13 matches are on this card. And, ooh, 11 of them are, are either good or great. There's only two bad matches on this one. Before we go on, I'd mostly give you a now. The ring announcer is wearing the greatest outfit I've ever seen a ring announcer wear. It's like, it's like, it's like it's, um, oh, God. Do you know when you think of something and it just vanishes? Guy, Street Fighter, where's the red? I'm thinking M. Bison. Is it M. Bison? I think it actually is M. Bison. Yeah, looks like M. Bison, but in blue. Just thought I'd throw that out there. So, single, single night tournament, lots of matches. Winner is the Super J champion. It's that simple. So, Guido. And, oh, yeah, I need to point out, I'm crapping my Japanese wrestling at the best times. I struggle with the names. Please don't diss me in the comments because I got someone's name wrong. I'm just a moron and everyone knows it, all right? Just, just, just be content if you want to write, me, you got the name wrong, that I'm a fucking dick, all right? We'll move on. Guido defeated Dean Malenko in a good opening contest. This was lovely technical wrestling. Never seen Guido, and I know after speaking to some people that they're not, you know, at this time he wasn't their favourite, shall we say? But a lot of nice crisp wrestling, a lot of nice technical map based wrestling as both men you work on the arms. Dean Malenko controlled. He used a lovely jackhammer. What two, three years before Bill Goldberg came along, which is fantastic. Guido comes back with a tombstone power driver. He misses a diving headbutt. Big clothesline gets two for. Dean, as does the sunset flip, but he comes off the ropes and eats an absolutely fucking massive power slam for the one, two, three. That was a two and a half star match. Fantastic. Next, Super Delphin uh, defeats Shinjino, or Shinjino, Otari, I think, is it? I'm sorry. In a really good match. Well, no, it wasn't as good as the opener because of things that will transpire in a minute. So the thing about this one, the thing about this one is that Super Delphin just spent the whole match getting the shit kicked out of him. And not just getting the shit kicked out of him, yeah? One Pacific body part, and that was his left knee. My God, Otana absolutely massacred the guy's leg. And I love that. I love psychology. I love good storytelling at the best of times, as you know. The flip side, of course, is with psychology is that if someone works your knee the entire match and then you pop up and not sell the damn thing as if nothing's wrong, yeah, you're going to lose marks in Mark P's book. So this could have been a three-star match easily, 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 easily. But, um, like I say, Delphin completely didn't sell the knee. I he sold, no, he sold it for like one minute towards the early start of the match. 
Also, the finish just comes out of nowhere because he hits a tornado DDT and you're thinking, you know, he gets the win and you're thinking to yourself, God, this is turning more into thoughts, isn't it? Because I don't want to go move, 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 move because people find that boring or I'm thinking in my mind that people would find that boring. It's a thoughts review. I'll, do, I'll definitely review the top two matches, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, here's the tornado DDT and you're thinking to yourself, man, I was just starting to enjoy that. This match could have done with being about two, three, four, maybe even five matches, five matches, Fuck, I'm such a monk. Five minutes. It's not difficult longer, couldn't it? it well, I say couldn't it, assuming that you watched it. God, I'm such a pro. Let's have a big swig of piss. That's what we need. When everything's going back, have a swig of piss and everything's out here. Mm. So, Black Tiger defeated Takamishi Noku in a good match. For those who don't know, Black Tiger's some guy. You've probably never heard of him. His name is Eddie Guerrero. Um, and this was an interesting one because... This was a sort of age experience versus youth sort of thing because, well, I mean, this started off and you thought this is going to be a complete squash. Eddie slash Tiger obliterated him, obliterated Taka in the first minute, hitting a power bomb in the first minute. But Taka did manage to come back and he got some really good stuff in, to be honest. A beautiful snap belly to belly suplex, plancher, German suplex. Um, Eddie comes back with a power bomb and a frost splash that gets two. Taka hits his own power bomb. Tornado DDT by Eddie Guerrero is one of those get the fuck down. Drives him forehead first, good and proper into the canvas. I love that. Um, oh yeah, sorry, the Tornado DDT that I'm just talking about actually gets the win for Eddie Guerrero. This is a two and three quarter star match. Absolutely fantastic. El Samurai. Oh, this this one. All right, this is the one that I've been dreading. All right. <laughs> Bear in mind how bad my writing is at the best of times. You think I'm actually going to be able to read this. But Mashiyoshi Motiga. That sound right? Sounds right in my mind. In a meh, well, it's a, a one and three quarter stars. There's a, the thing about this match is that is that for every good thing there is, I mean, there's a lot of really nice technical wrestling in it. Again, there's some lovely spots in it. Um, I mean, there's a, a nice psychology. It's just that there's so many botches in it, botches all over the place, I mean the first thing, the first thing is Matiga leaping up onto the onto the top turn book, yeah, and then falling off it, and that sort of sets the tone for this, you're like, oh yeah, this could be good, oh, no, it's not at all, it's a star and three quarters match, like I say, lots of botches, um, German, um, a German by Samurai and a Powerbomb get the win. But like I say, so, so, so many botches. Uh, Ricky Fuji uh, defeated uh, Negro Casas in a mm, match. This is a one-star match. A lot of nice groundwork at the start. Uh, it's basic. The thing about this match is basic, right? And it's good. But there's nothing of note. Does that make sense, right? They stay on the ground, or they stay on the map for quite a long time. And it's all good, but when they get up off the map, the match seems to fall apart a bit. And there's nothing that really stands out, to be honest. The Tiger Bomb gets the win for Fuji. It's a one-star match. It's one of those ones where, yeah, like I say, they're on the map and they're doing all this lovely map work and it's basics. They're going through the motions, almost. It's like the stuff that you learn at wrestling school, you know. They're just... It's, it's good... There's nothing, you can't fault it. It's absolutely perfect. It's crisp. It's when they get up off the map that it sort of just falls apart. Well, no, it just doesn't fall apart. It's just there's nothing to it. All right, one star, though. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's not the world's worst match. It's not a dud. It's just there's not really much to it. Juicing Liger to feed Hayabusha in a good match. Back to back to good stuff with a three-star match. This was a good little match. Shall we go through this one, shall we? Uh, so the dive to the outside by Busha before Liger is even in the ring. He uh, works Liger's knee, then Liger works Boucher's, including a figure four. Power bomb gets two, and then they go back to the knees. Uh, gets two off a of lariat, and then goes back to the knees. Fantastic. Back suplex and a sunset flip in the corner, then a superplex. Uh, High Boucher starts a fight back with a leg lariat and a senton, a spin kick and a moonsault get two. Goes for Rana, that gets botched, that gets two. Shooting star, pre shooting star press misses and it's one of those Brock Lesnar WrestleMania 19 shooting star presses. I mean, his opponent gets out of the way but he face plants the map good and proper and it doesn't look nice. <laughs> uh, like Bomb gets two, Lion counters a drop kick into a power bomb, which is a, he comes off. He comes off, Hayabusha comes off, yeah, and he catches him in midair. 
As he's going for the drop kick, bam, power ball, absolutely fantastic. And a fisherman suplex gets the win. Three stars, absolutely fantastic. I need to point out that the great Suzuki, I'm sorry if I say that wrong, and Wild Pegasus don't go have, have to fight. They get a bye into the next round. Now, I don't speak any Japanese whatsoever, and they may have mentioned this in the commentary. Of course, this is the drawback of this show, is that the commentary is completely in Japanese. So it's one of the things, you know, if you don't mind, then you don't mind. But if you're trying to figure out why these two guys got buys into the next round, it's quite tricky, you know. So next, Guido, what name again, defeated Super Delphin in a crap match. This was the worst one of the night. There's nothing at all to it. There's still no lots of it. Delphin obviously doesn't sell the knee that he just spent the whole of the last match that he was in getting destroyed. Um... I mean, it's a nice suplex and an elbow drop for two. Tornado DDT gets two, but Guido rolls through. Basically, this whole match is Super Delphin kicking the shit out of Guido, and then Guido rolling through a roll up to get the win. It's that simple. It's a half a star. Wild Pegasus defeated Black Tiger in a good match. This is a tricky one for me because I haven't written hardly any notes for it because I was so engaged in the match. Wild Pegasus, for those who don't know, is a guy called Chris Benoit. I'm sure WWE have never heard of him, especially Black Tiger, obviously, as I mentioned before. is Eddie Guerrero. There's technical wrestling by, you know, by both men, and it's really nice. Um, I can't, re I, like I say, I haven't, I've had, right, shall I tell you what I've written? Because there's like five, no, five lines. So Pegasus sung like Chris Benoit. Tiger works the leg in a lovely bit of technical wrestling. Lovely reverse suplex by Pegasus is followed by a deadlift German suplex. He works the neck and the match goes back and forth between both men. Brain busted by Tornado DDT is countered. Eddie comes off the top but eats a power slam. which he's caught him in there. Bam, get down for the win. That, 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 now this is a three and a half star match. And that description right there doesn't give you even the slightest bit of justice this is a match you need to go and watch basically i haven't given it justice because i was too engrossed in it i was really really enjoying this one and like i said i didn't really i was like halfway through the match i'm like shit i haven't written anything for this one you know it's not my piss someone else's sasuke great sasuke he's written l samurai in a good match another three and a half one so this one spends the most part of the of the early stages on the map and that's not a bad thing at all. Really nice, crisp, technical wrestling. I could watch them wrestle on the map all day. Some people are not like that. Some people like high spots or hardcore weapons brawls. I, if they're on the map for half an hour, it will not bother me one bit. I promise you that. Um, this is an interesting one. The, the crowd are loudest for this match of any of the show. It's very disconcerting, this one, because... Of course, I'm used to American-style pro wrestling where the crowds pop for everything. But in there, it's weird, man. In that last match, right, the Wild Pegasus versus Black Tiger one, the crowd popped big style for a brain buster. Not that it's actually, no, it was the first one. It's Black Tiger, Black Tiger versus Takuma Shinoku. Yeah, they were really quiet throughout most of the match until Eddie hit a brain buster. And the crowd went nuts for that. This match is the exception to the rule, whereas the crowd are properly into this one. Um, Handspring Moontalk by Great Sasuke, that's amazing, flips the outside bit of Samurai, followed by German for two, as does a diving headbutt, Arana gets two for Sasuke, Arana gets two, as does a bomb for Samurai, he goes for another Rana, but Sasuke rolls through for the win. Match was a good mix of lovely technical groundwork, yeah, and lovely crisp, perfectly done high spots. It's, you know, the perfect mix of what I expect to see in Japanese wrestling. Yeah, of course it was nice and stiff as well. Always oh, good, isn't it? And then, Yushin, 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 Yushin Liger defeated Ricky Fuji in an okay match. Matt worked to start, which has been the norm for all of them tonight, hasn't it? Powerbomb by Fuji on the floor. Yes, 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 on the floor. He gets revenge, though. Fuji does with a double stomp off the top rope to the floor. Problem is, the that that's really the best mix of this one. I mean, uh, there's I mean, all right, let's talk about through. Liger, cont Liger continues with a drop kick, a power bomb, and a release German suplex. He goes for a superplex, um, but Fuji rolls through. Um, Fuji drop kicks Liger to the floor and back, back baseball slides him. Back suplex on in the ring gets two. Rana gets the win. What the fuck? This is a new one. Rana gets the win with a Rana. 
That's absolutely right. It doesn't say Fuji gets the win or Raikki gets the win. It says Rana gets the win with a Rana. Now, the very man I put at the top, Liger defeats Fuji. That's an interesting one. Yeah, it's not a bad match. It's really not a bad match at all. It's a two-star match. It's just that the only things that really stand out are those two spots. I mean, a powerbomb on the, ap on the apron, idiot. I didn't say that at all. Didn't a powerbomb on the floor. Yes. Oh, yes. Looks impressive. The double stomp looks impressive, but that's really the only things that properly stand out. While Pegasus defeated Guido in a good match, Pegasus owns at the start with chops in the corner. They're so hard, these chops are, that the ring moves a little bit when he's chopping them. Fantastic. He controls until he misses a dropkick. Guido takes over with a power driver and works the neck, which is all nice. Moonsault the outside. Inside, a power slam gets two, as does a northern light suplex. And Guido's looking all good until he tries to dive off the top and botches it something rotten. <laughs> Crap looking bomb gets two for Pegasus. Another and a diamond head will get the win for Wild Pegasus. This match was weird because... All night I've been looking at Guido going, this guy isn't actually that good, is it? It looks like he's been carried by his opponents. And I went into this one expecting this one to be pretty shit, to be honest. But maybe Benoit carried into a good performance. Two and a half stars. Next, we've got two more matches, all right? That incidentally was a semi-final match. So while Pegasus is in the final, who is his opponent? It will be one of two men. It will either be the great Suzuki or Jusin Liar. Four and three quarter stars I give this match just before I go on. Just need to point that out. So, Matt worked to start, including a beautiful surfboard stretch. Then, right, it's got this surfboard stretch. He then, Liger then twists Suzuki's neck around. So it looks like it's at 90 degrees the angle that it's meant to be. And it looks so painful and so pretty at the same time. It's just brilliant. Um, and now I've lost the place. Liger like stays on the neck with the camel clutch and a rolling... Oh, that doesn't say a rolling lock, does it? A rolling lock? A rolling lock? A rolling lock? A roll lock? A rolling lock? I don't know. Anyway, we'll ignore that. Let's start let's try that one again. Show so he stays on the neck with a tombstone power driver and a cross face chicken wing. And this is some lovely psychology, yeah? Because then, think about the way that a cross face chicken wing has got you, yeah? He then starts working the arm. And he works the arm beautifully, really, really nice, including the hammer lock, which he wrenches around like two or three times, which has got to hurt at the best of times. He then puts on a cross arm break, which is just fantastic, if you ask me. Ah, lovely psychology. So Suzuki counters a drop kick and hits a lovely moon talk to the outside. And Suzuki becomes my favourite wrestler of the night because he sells that motherfucking arm. And I love that. All night we've had psychology in the matches, but none of which has contributed towards the finish whatsoever. And none of which has been carried forward by the winners. As we saw with Super Delphin, gets the shit beaten out of his knee and then completely ignores it in the next match because I'm Superman. Doesn't work in my mind at all. <sighs> Where are we? I said sells the arm, doesn't I? Suzuki sells the arm. Top tope by Suzuki. Inside it gets a tombstone power drive. Gets two as does a razor's edge. Another tombstone, but a sent on misses. An elbow and a Liger bomb get two. A top rope run gets two as does a roll through by Suzuki. Yeah, he gets a two off it and then he sort of counters through into it and gets another two. Which is nice. Um, and now I've lost my place again. Release German suplex. It's a two go close two for Liger. A fisherman's buster gets two for Liger, who then suplexes Suzuki to the outside and hits a tope as well as a rolling kick on the outside. It's lovely. Suzuki botches a dive, which is the only bad part about this match. This loses it a quarter of a star because it was all so good and you were ready to go five stars. He spring tries to springboard in and face plants. Liger, it, it looks, the way that the finish is done, it looks like it's on purpose because Liger gets cocky, tries to pick him up and a roll through. Sorry, and a Rana, sorry, get this win for Suzuki. This was a superb match. I encourage everyone to go and watch this match. Absolutely perfect psychology as he works the neck and the arm. And he capitalises on a moment of weakness or a moment of cockiness to Suzuki to get the win. Absolutely fan freaking tastic. I know, excuse me, and only that one little mistake stops it being, mm, excuse me, a five star. That's fizzy piss, that, isn't it? Dying. So, on to the finals of the tournament. So it's Wild Pegasus, a.k.a. Chris Bone Knight, 
versus the great Sasuke. And let me tell you something about this match. You may not have seen many of, or any of the, show, of the matches on this show. You may have seen the main event. Because this match is on the Hard Knocks, the Chris Benoit story, DVD. And on that match, commentary is done by Michael Cole and Taz. And Cole says, this match is so good, it could, it's, almost, it's almost as good as a SmackDown match. In which case, you just, not that I don't want to punch Michael Cole repeatedly all day, every day. But this time, you, you, know, you want to intensify your punches just a little bit, you know? This is brilliant. It's a five-star match. And once again, as we've had all night, great technical wrestling to start as uh, Pegasus works the arm and the neck, which I love. Because think about it, the whole of last match, yeah, you had uh, Liger working the head and the neck and the arm. Brilliant. <sighs> Suzuki with a bow and arrow and a surfboard as well. Aha, uh-huh. he works the back some more, get a German suplex, gets a two for Pegasus, but Suzuki tries for an arm bar. Pegasus tries a power bomb, but Sasuke counters it into an arm drag, which is lovely. Pegasus tries a power bomb, but Sasuke counters with an arm drag. Well, I've just said that, haven't I? Sasuke is just dead, though. This is the great thing about that. One of the things I love about this match so much is to think about it. Against Guido, Wild Pegasus had quite an easy match, but against Houston Liger, I'm going to call him a different name every time, I don't know if you know this, but against Liger, he worked a really long, drag-out, intense brawl of a match. All sorts of shit went down. So, of course, every time Benoit slash Pegasus goes on a bit of offense, or gets like two or three moves in, Suzuki is just completely dead. You're completely dead. Ha! Springboard elbow by Becky Pegasus, followed by a dragon suplex, gets two. Diving headbutt gets two, as does a power bomb. He pulls on a sharp shooter. Oh, lovely. Uh, Suki gets, has just got absolutely nothing left by the look of it at the moment. Till the back break, he gets two. A drop kick misses, and they do a nice reversal sequence. German suplex gets two for Pegasus. He then tries another dragon suplex, but it gets rolled up for two. A crossbody by Sasuku is followed by a... Um, crazy fucking dive to the outside absolutely mental and it looks like Suzuki bounces off the announcer's table which is always a nice one to see isn't it and I've lost my place again where does it say crazy just look for the word crazy inside a German suplex and a perfect plex gets two you could call it a fisherman suplex if you like to me it will always be a perfect plex it's just that simple <laughs> for Suzuki Pegasus gets suplex to the outside and that looks nasty Drop kick to the outside. Sasuke lands on his ass. It's like it's a dive. It's a drop kick off the very top of the turnbuckle to the outside. He lands hard on his ass, and that's gotta hurt. Back inside, Muto gets two for Suzuki. He goes up top to do another one, but and let me get this for a match-winning move. Yeah, <sighs> while Pegasus hit a super gut wrench suplex. So it's a gut wrench superplex, is it not? And that is what gets the win. And that was a five-star classic, in my opinion. And if you don't believe me, links down below. You can go and watch it right this minute. This show's fantastic. There's one bad match, and that's a half-star. There's one match that's got a one-star, but the rest are all two-star at minimum. The top two matches are absolutely superb, and this truly is one of the greatest shows you can watch. There's, you know, I think, bear in mind that everyone's always said about me, haven't they, that if I rate a match three stars... You'll probably rate it three and a half stars. I'm that little bit harsher than most people, as everyone knows. So I would normally be a half a star below everyone else, yeah? So think about it. Think about the ratings of this. I mean, five stars, four and three quarters. Let's go back down the card. So that would be five stars as well. And then so it would be three stars, two and a half stars, four stars, four stars, one star, three and a half, one and a half, uh, two and a quarter, three and a quarter, Jesus, what more do you want from a show? Two and three quarters and two and three quarters. If you can't say this is a nine out of ten show, then I don't know what is, to be honest. I encourage every single person watching this video right now to go and watch this show. It is absolutely fantastic. The link is right down there. I've been Mark P. I hope you've enjoyed this. I, um, I've now got, actually got a sore jaw because I've been speaking too fast. And, um, yeah, I've been Mark P. I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you've seen this show, and you know, I'd love to know what you think of it. If you haven't seen this show, go and watch it, and then let me know down here what you think of it. That would make me a happy boy, all right?
Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.